Well, it's lovely to virtually meet you and a massive congratulations on, on Rebel Moon. Thank I you. think for part ones, they always have such a difficult task in, you know, establishing the world, but also finding the balance so then they can stand on their own two feet as well. So how did you find getting that balance correct? Yeah, I guess for me, uh, you know, because it's a, I was looking at it as a, you know, sort of both as a singular story. When then when we said, okay, this is part one, you know, really we needed, the nice thing about it was we didn't have to rush. We didn't, we could take our time with introducing everyone, get to know Cora, understand who she is because of what's going to happen in two. And then, you know, just try and make the story of her sort of finding a home, really the kind of story of movie one, you know, like her uh, returning to Velt and, and having Velt be for the first time in her life, a thing that she could uh, call home, which I feel like for anyone is, you know, sort of completes her sort of circle when it comes to uh, her relationship to the village and to herself and what we know. Of course, that's going to continue in movie two, but that was kind of the, that was kind of the idea of movie one at its sort of heart or thesis, the thesis of it, you know. And I think like in today more now so than ever, <laughs> directors like their little like trademarks of their their filmmaking style that's got an even bigger spotlight sort of shot on it so what do you think some of your trademarks of filmmaking are oh geez um uh, trademarks of my my trademarks uh well yes i mean i look i have a pretty i don't want to say unique but a particular point of view you know i think um that people have come to sort of see i i don't try and do it you know what i mean i don't try and and I, I guess that's what makes it authentic, you know, to some degree, because I'm not trying to go like, oh, we got to do this kind of shot because I'm because I'm me. So I got to get my kinds of shots in. Uh, I don't really do that at all. I just go like, oh, this is kind of like, let's put the camera here and we'll do this. And that ends up being, I guess, in some ways, a way that I do it. So um, what those tropes are is I, I don't I'm not 100 percent sure. Slow motion, I guess, what people would say or. You know, just uh, this kind of big sort of tableaus that I like to do, um, things like that. Well, you've certainly got an excellent legacy, especially with, shall we say, the Snyderverse. And <clears throat> I don't think maybe, well, maybe you did know it was going to have such a, a cinematic and cultural impact on the world. And you spoke recently about how you were warned about the joke in, in the Barbie movie. So looking back on it now, do you, did you ever think it was going to have like the legacy that it does now? Absolutely not. I, 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 um, I did had no idea that the Snyder cut or sort of, you know, that whole movement would become sort of like in the zeitgeist as this weird, like pop culture phenomenon. Absolutely. It's not a thing you could plan for or imagine. So um, I've done my best to, sur to surf it, but uh, it's, uh, it's, you look, I I'm humbled by the, and honored that anyone would care that much about something we do. It's just cool, I guess. Well, one thing that I'm really looking forward to, of course, is part two after enjoying part one. So what can you tease for us to expect? I think in part two, you really, um, you get a chance to kind of dive and in, into the culture of Velt a little bit more. And then of course you're, um, you're into like a real, a war movie. It's a new age for the universe.